Welcome to the Travel Man Podcast. My name is Ben and I host this cool little podcast. Today, Mandy, my wife, and I will be your travel guide. We talk about five places to travel to in May. I hope that you find this guide useful and enjoyable. So here it is. This is my opinion from my own experience. I've also compiled this list through some research using the interwebs. Enjoy the podcast and in no particular order. Here's number one. Mandy, you're back. I'm back. The back. accidental podcast star returns. <laughs> well, actually, for the second time, isn't it? Se- oh. For this podcast, uh. anyway. <laughs> we won't say what happened. No, to it. that's between you and me. Yeah, something happened. The file was corrupted. So we had recorded all this before and the file disappeared. Yeah, we're saving you all the oh. banter from the previous one. Yeah, so we're just going to get into it now. Done. Done. Let's do Let's it. Let's get into Let's it. Let's do it. So it's going to be the top five, well, five places to see in May yep. 2019. It's Sounds like good. a little bit of a travel guide. I'll try and do these on a monthly basis. I don't think I can keep to that, but if I can, that would be great. But the first um, place that we're going to look into is Bali, Indonesia, where we're going pretty soon in yes. about 20 days. We'll be there in May. Yeah, we'll be there in May. We're so taking our own advice. We are. We're taking our own <laughs> advice. Um, Bali is a perfect place to travel to in May. Yeah, tell me why. Why? Well, it's got spectacular beaches. It's got amazing food. The weather is perfect in May. Yeah. It's pretty dry. Yeah. There's great temples that I never spoke about on the last podcast that you can see. Friendly people. I love Indonesians. They're a great bunch of people. Mm -hmm. And here are just a few reasons, in my opinion, why you should travel to Bali in May. So Bali's wet season has finished. Yep. So you don't have to worry about the rain, which is sometimes an issue. But if you're in Ubud out there in the in the mountains, it's actually quite a lovely thing to have the rain fall down and then you're jumping in your pool or something <laughs> like that and you're looking just at the forest and the mist and all that. Sounds good to me. It's a beautiful place. Beautiful place, Ubud, actually. It is a place that if you do have time to go to Bali, then I would definitely try and get to Ubud. Yep. Now... It's the dry season, so the weather in Bali is going to warm up. Mm-hmm. So it's not going to be really boiling, but remember, it's, it's humid, but it's going to be 28 degrees. So perfect to go swimming in, lounge about, not visit those hot. temples. Not too hot. Being a tropical climate, it's yeah. 28. It's a great, de- great temperature. Well, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a fantastic temperature. And the, and the good thing is that the beaches are clean and clear in uh Kuta on yep. that west coast where so usually wet uh, season's over. So. Well, yeah, wet season's over. Sometimes those um, those beaches there in Kuta can be a little bit uh, messy. Well, with, they're well, they're surf beaches, aren't well, they? Well, yeah, yeah, they're surf beaches, so they can be a little bit messy at times. But these days, well, in May and up until I think September, the beaches are pretty clean. Yeah, perfect. Also, try going south. Now, the beaches south, which I forget the name of, but they are on a previous podcast that I did with Mona about three or four podcasts ago. Yeah. They are fantastic. So, listen to that podcast to know more about the beaches south. My favorite beach is probably in the northeast of of Bali, which is Ahmed Beach. It's a Black sand beach. Yeah. Black sand because you have volcanic uh, activity nearby. So that black beach is due to the volcano. Mm. So those waters were really, really clear. That was stunning. Kind of similar to the beach that we went to once in Thailand, Koh Lipe. Mm. Uh, That was very clear water. But But unfortunately, yeah, well. It's funny, Ahmed Beach was fantastic, but it still didn't make my top t- 10 or top 10 beaches episode. Mm. So, you listen to that one if you want to know the best beaches that I've ever swum in. Sure. Those waters were great. It's um, also not school holidays in Bali, so that's a bit of a positive. You'll have less people about, yep. so it's quieter. And I'm pretty sure it's not school holidays in Australia either. So, if you're an Australian- no, they're finishing up now. Um, so, yeah. They're all finishing up around mm-hmm. now when we're recording. 
at this time in April. Yeah. So they're all finishing up now. So it'll be good. Also, prices for beer, food, accommodation uh, are lower as well as the activities. Yeah. They'll be cheaper for you. Yep. And that's all because it's not the high season. So yep. that's, all, that's all positives. And um, you can come to May uh, Bali anytime within May, June, September. So they're great months. Yeah. So the great, thing, great months. The thing about Bali is um, it's a, a fairly decent-sized island, but there's so many different places to go to get a different feel mm. of um, the travel experience that you want. Yes. So you've got places like Kuda and Legian. It's got a lot of bars, restaurants, clubs, very Western. I suppose you'll see a lot of Australians there. Yes, um, yes. So that's not where you go to relax as much as – to have the best of Western world, I suppose, whilst you're in Asia. Um, there are places like Seminyak, which is where we'll be staying. Um, it's got a wide selection of private villas, resorts, boutiques, shopping, fine dining, mm. cafes, beach clubs. So it's a bit of that hybrid between um, going away to experience a little bit of Asia, mm. but also still keeping in touch with the luxuries. Mm-hmm. Um, another popular place that's coming up is Changu. And Changu, it's been going yes. uh, really becoming from a sleepy sort of surf area to full of like i suppose hipster and healthy cafes and what did mona call them there oh not sure she called them kind of like a hipster nomad there's something nomad. yeah that's probably a good explanation or a good description but it's got a wide range of um different types of accommodation as well. Yep. So this is a, a newish sort of place. Um, Ubud, of course, you mentioned mm. already, a lot of people like to go there for its beauty, um, yep. being rice terraces and quite hilly, but also, you know, to have a bit of a spiritual experience yes, through true. yoga, got the yoga and places um, that offer sort of more cultural things to do. And massages. Massages as well. Something that's totally opposite to that is Nusa Dua. Nusa Dua has got... Just about um, most of the five star resorts and hotels. It's a nice looking place. It is nice, but it's more of a gated sort of. It's a of gated compound sort yeah. of area where you'll probably end up there if you've got children or want but, just resort style yeah, holiday. Yeah, Sanua is around there. Yep, Sanua as well. So it attracts older people or more family family orientated crowds. Yeah. Um, sheltered beaches. So that's mm-hmm. great for swimming. Um, more of a village feel than a city feel. And then you've got places like Jimbaran, which is not too far from the airport. Um, something else um, oh. is that it's got, again, oh, yeah. villas, resorts, restaurants. Nice. Um, nice. Yep. And then um, Cliffside is Uluwatu. Uh, Uluwatu's got really awesome five-star beach clubs as well as um, resorts. And yep. it's quite dramatic in the way that it looks because it is very cliff. It is on a cliff. Um, and nice. You got you've pool bars around those pool, cliffs. Pool bars, tick, tick, tick. Um, also, pool bars. I mean, beach pool, clubs. Pool bars, pool bars, and beach clubs. And got beach all clubs, because beach clubs need to have pool bars or That's pools. It. That's it. Then they're not a beach club if they don't have a pool. That's it. And what you've also got is the islands around. Oh yeah, um, true. Around Bali, so you've got places like Nusa Lembongan, um, Chenigan. And Panita, as well as the Gili Islands and Lombok. So, lots to see and lots to cater for for people that are wanting a bit of an island holiday. And you mentioned Nusa Dua as well. You've got Banoa Beach. Banoa Beach, just outside That's of Nusa Dua as well. fantastic place. And yeah. um, We spent some time there. Quiet, but um, again, something yes. else to experience. And you've got the rice paddy fields, which I love walking through. Yep. And they're great for uh, Instagram opportunities. And you mentioned we did the drive from Ubud to Ahmed, so kind of through the centre onto the east coast. And as you're going through there, you do get to experience some more rice terraces. You've got Turtaganga as well, You've the big palace, the water great palace. W- water palaces and temples as great. well. So, yeah, well worth a drive. Fantastic. And there's delicious food that you can have. Need, and- need us. Say, need oh. we say any more? Indonesia. Sorry, if you like particularly- satay. Balinese food, Balinese French food. Indonesian food. Um, it's really quite delicious. And and it's spicy. Spicy, yeah. And and just some of the tastiest food you'll eat. Yep, lots of grilled meats. Love satay, the grilled meats there. Lots of stuff that's delicious. Chicken, grilled chicken. Chicken, yep, and babaguling. Babaguling, which I love, babaguling. 
Very, very delicious. Where are we oh. off to next, Benjamin? We're off to Los Angeles, USA, oh. as uh, number four. A or place near and dear to our hearts. My fourth choice. Yeah, it's very dear to our hearts because it's like my second home. Mm. I love this place. Met some really great people in LA. Yep. Uh, it's starting to warm up in May, which is great. It won't hit over 25 degrees during the day, which is fantastic. You don't want it too much hotter in Venice because... Oh, not Venice. Well, yeah, all of LA all because of you LA. want to be able to enjoy it. And and hot weather is not too great uh, to enjoy activities and so forth. The nights will be cool. Yep. Depending, obviously, where you're staying. I know Venice Beach, which I just mentioned before, will be cooler than downtown LA. Mm-hmm. Which in turn will probably be cooler than West Hollywood. I mean, there's all little microclimates within LA because of where they're situated. Yeah. So May is a perfect time to go to LA. Nothing's stopping you. There's so much to do. Don't be scared off by LA. LA is awesome. It's a sprawling metropolis. Just happens to be one of my favorite cities in the world and offers so much to you. LA in May also has hardly any smog. Oh, the, the marine air layer? Is, yeah, well, the air is really clear. Great. So, the marine layer is not around. There's next to zero rain, mm-hmm. so hardly any. You'll also find some discounted rooms in May. Perfect. You can't escape the traffic, unfortunately. That's always going to be there, so that sucks, but that's okay. The it's traffic the will the always be bad. Yeah. Uh, now, there's this um, jazz reggae festival, which we missed last time, which I'd like to go to. Maybe next year if we were to go sure. or the year after. It's www.jazzreggaefest.com. You should try and check that out if you're going to LA in May. Yeah. Because it's only in May. Also, go to the museum and gardens. They're fantastic. You, you got that strangely shaped Getty Center with the weird buildings. Yep. Actually, if you haven't seen that film on the Getty, see that. It's all on the money in the Netflix, world. Netflix, all the money in the world. Uh, also, at the Getty Center, you'll be amazed by the artwork there. The artwork on display is beautiful. Yeah, yeah pretty impressive. Some of the best art I've ever seen. Yep. And the sculptured garden that kind of is at the bottom of uh, the, the complex, Getty Center of yeah. the complex is fantastic. It's got yeah. like um, beautiful sculptured gardens, a walkway, little river, little... Um, it's yeah, great. it's like a little river that you can walk past, meander through. Mm. Oh, it's just it's just fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, also, there's something that we enjoyed the first time we went to LA, which was the Griffith Observatory. That's a great place to see all of LA and it's all its glory. And you've got that uh, famous Hollywood sign. Yes, and you can see um, the gardens are quite nice there as well as the Greek theatre is ha- housed there as well. Lots of live music Absolutely. and things that come out of there. Yep, absolutely. And you've got Santa Monica Beach, which is pretty neat. Yep. And uh, the pier. And the pier, which has all, all the rides and stuff on it. But I must admit, if I had a choice between going to Santa Monica or Venice Beach, I'd probably choose Venice Beach. Yeah, Santa Monica is a bit more um, yeah, shopping glitzy. and gl- glitzy. Good word. Yeah. Um, you, and you got the shopping there. So there's yeah. no, no real shopping centers in Venice. It's more like little restaurants, well, cafes. You've, you've got Abikini Boulevard, which is well, pretty cool. I mean more like a mall. No. Shopping mall is not more. Not like in Santa Monica. It's no. more Santa Monica, whereas Venice doesn't have that. True. Also, downtown LA, DTLA, as it's affectionately known, is a place that uh, is probably less frequented by tourists. Yeah. And I don't know why, but everyone seems to want to just check out Hollywood or Venice the or Santa about, Monica. The thing about DTLA is that it's got this really fascinating historic core the historic core has got quite a number of um theaters that it was yes. in its heyday on the street called broadway um was a lot of places where obviously centered around the film fest film um industry yeah was areas where they showed film but these um theaters are really amazing they've got beautiful architecture and um some are derelict some, yeah, they are are, some are being used for other things but the the historic core, you wouldn't think that LA has such um, history in its architecture, and that's what makes it quite special down mm. downtown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's it's a fantastic and place. Good food there too. Oh yeah, well, one of the good places to eat food would be the Grand Central Market. So if you want to eat a fantastic Reuben sandwich, you know, like a pastrami sandwich, outside of New York City, 
go to Wexler's Deli yep. at Grand Central Market. It is so fantastic. It's all um, in-house smoked and their locks or their oh. smoked salmon, as we call it, is pretty good oh, too. Their locks on their bagels are great yeah, there. awesome. Is that what you mean? Yep. Yeah, so at Grand Central Market, it's not just, you know, your, your um, Wexler's Deli. There's a lot of other places yep. that you can eat. Breweries, Mexican, Thai, Mexican, yep. fish, breweries, coffee shops. Yep. Famous egg sluts there. Yep. Delicious. Which I love. Also, if you're going to go there, take a, take a ride up the Angels Flight Funicular. Yes. Yeah, so That's that a heap of fun and it's cheap. It takes you to the kind of arts area up and down. Yeah, it so takes you right up to the Broad. The Broad and to go the Contemporary the yeah. Museum of Art. And, yes, that um, um, that sexy art gallery <laughs> with all the sexy pictures, and yeah, nudist and it's got some nice stuff. views as well. Yeah, so also another great place to go and eat and also shop if you want is yep. the Grove and Original Farmers Market. Yep, nice uh, turkey sandwich there. Yeah, I had. yeah, that turkey sandwich was pretty cool. Yep, I forgot what I ate. You had another the- Reuben. <laughs> I had a, yeah, I had another Reuben. There you go. I just like to eat Reuben sandwich. <laughs> You know what I really enjoyed when we were at that um, little brewery. Remember that it was like it was like a little shack, nearly with some chairs, or maybe it was more like a little beer. Yeah, remember that brewery where we, we had oh, beers? Oh yeah, no, that was at and the I was farmers watching market. NBA yeah, at the yeah, farmers yeah, yeah. market. I think that was selling the beers that they sell um, oh. in the Los Angeles brewery in the arts district that I can't think of the name of. Yeah. Um, but they sell the beer there. That's a place that wouldn't allow you in. Yeah, because I didn't have Because you didn't my have ID. your ID. It doesn't matter how old I look, guys. You need to yeah, have your ID. Yeah, yeah we're um, not going to talk about that place. But I, I will mention that um, that yeah. sausage place, the... Um, Worst Kush. Worst Kush. Worst Kush. <laughs> So that brewery is near Wurschkirch, so don't go to that brewery because I was very upset. Angels, Angels Flight Brewery or no, Angels, Angels something? Angels Brewery, I think. Yeah, so that wasn't great. But you know what? A lot of people enjoy it. Shit because, happens. But we didn't get in. Okay. So. Uh, just be careful if you're at Nordstrom in the Grove. <laughs> Make sure you don't spend too much money. We spent so much money on perfume there. It is crazy, but the place is fantastic. Also, you've got um, those famous uh, donuts. The it's not a cruffin; it's a well. They originate in um, New York. They originate in New York. In Dominic what are they Ansel. Again? Dominic Ansel's the cronut. Cronut. You can. I'm thinking well, of a cruffin from here. Yeah, if you if you're there early enough at the yeah, Dominic yeah. Ansel Bakery in the Grove, you may be able to get yourself on a cronut and not have to go to New York to get one. Although, and highly recommend eating one. Oh, the there. cronut's fantastic. Yeah, you could. Yeah, so good. Very, so so good. Also, if you're in or well, near mm, West Heidel, Heidel, I was going to say West Heidelberg. <laughs> oh, that's uh, kind of near my house. Uh, yeah. Hint, hint. <laughs> uh, I meant West Hollywood. You can go to LACMA. Yep. And LACMA's in La Brea area. Yep. We've also, where it's actually, it's affectionately known as LACMA, but it's a Los Angeles County Museum of Art. Yep. A uh, fantastic place to view art. Also, it's very nice for Instagrammable pictures. I was just going to say, don't be one of those Instagram people that just stand in the front and take pictures of the lampposts. Yeah, actually go into go the museum in. and go look in. at all the beautiful it's pictures. impressive. Next door is La Brea Tar Pits, which I love also. Yeah. And they're continually excavating and finding fossils from the Ice yeah, Age there. It's really wolves. fantastic. Dire wolves, woolly mammoths, saber-toothed tiger. Yes. Um, Pretty impressive that it's in the middle of a city yeah. and it's still bubbling with tar everywhere. Yeah, well, they're, and they're the tar is constantly coming up. And it's an um, active archaeological site, so really cool to think. Yeah, so when LA breaks in two... It'll, all uh, this stuff will come out. All this stuff will come out. So More it'll be animals. cool. It won't be cool, but it'll be cool for the... <laughs> I don't know what it's cool for. But anyway, Runyon Canyon Park is also yep. fun to visit. I haven't gone there, but every Hollywood celebrity goes there on you a weekend. You go for a hike? For you a hike. You never know you who you can might see. might bump into um, Matthew McCongany. M- McConaughey. McConaughey. <laughs> so you could bump into those type of people. Yep. Also, if you want to get accommodation there. Yep. So you'll find accommodation in Airbnbs, DTLA, or State in Venice Beach. Um, where else you can go to West Hollywood? Yes. For accommodation, you yeah. could probably go to 
Long Beach, Pasadena, wherever. Wherever. I don't and know. Surrounding suburbs. Like we said, LA is big. It's a big so place. So, depending on what you would like to see or what mm. kind of holiday, you could even split between two places well, like we Well, that's what we did. Yeah. We based ourselves in two different places, Venice Beach and DTLA. Yep. And, it was and we great. could see everything. There's a great... Um, I know it's going to sound funny, but there's great public transport if you're in DTLA yeah. and need to get to either Venice or West Hollywood. You can get to Hollywood. anywhere from DTLA. You've got a train line that will take you to West Hollywood. Mm. It will take you around to the major sites within there. Nothing to Long Beach, though. Nothing no, that way. No, but it does can- it does west. take you to Santa Monica as well. That's true. Yeah. And they're continually building lines and stuff. Given that there's going to be the Olympics in 2028, yep. they're extending train lines around... The city um, are, yes. to get to major attractions, which is great that they've started so early. The other thing is, is there's yeah, a that's true. there's a bus network as well um, that you can do a combo of train and bus. You get mm. good apps on the phone that tells you that's which true. way to go. That's true. Um, so there's plenty of opportunities to not just rely on a car. So that was spring in LA. Fantastic. Can I add some more? Yeah, yeah, because go, I go. just love LA so much. Yeah, yeah add some and, more. and I want to give them people some color around what else you oh, can okay. do. Yep, give them some color. Some color. Um don't because it's such a uh, mm-hmm. movie town. Don't forget the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Oh yeah. Um, as corny as it is, you can go see the stars on the footpaths and they go for quite a while. Um, you've got Hollywood Boulevard, of course, which is full of crazies, yeah. um, dressing up in different characters. I dressed up as a podcaster. <laughs> um, the thing about that area is if you like that sort of stuff, by all means, check it out. But it, it does get a bit irritating having so many It's just very there. samey. It is very samey. But anyway, going on with the theme of um, uh, movie stars, you can g- go to the ones that are underground or in the ground. In the Hollywood Ooh, Forever the Cemetery Hollywood and go Forever see Cemetery. some um, celebrity graves. Who's there? Um, quite a number of people. Also, um, oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll leave the listener to go check it out. Okay. Um, ben mentioned the Getty um, Centre, mm-hmm. which is near Malibu. But Love there's the also Getty the Centre. Getty Villa, which is near, um, sorry, the Getty Centre is near uh, Santa Monica. The mm-hmm. Getty Villa is near Malibu. Uh, um, yes, that villa. Yeah, so it's it's made in the image of Hadrian's Villa. Um, ah. And it's got, again, houses um, Getty's collection of art that he collected Getty over the years. Getty had so much art. Well, he tried to avoid paying tax, so he purchased art instead. Oh, that's right. So that's yeah. all there. And also loved his uh, grandson. Somewhat. Somewhere. And so that's that's some more artwork that you'll get to see and it'll really knock your socks off, stuff you haven't seen before. Pretty amazing. Um, you're pretty spoiled for choice with food in LA. So being its proximity to Mexico um, and a lot of Mexicans living there, the food is pretty authentic. Talking and, about Mexican yeah. food, uh, you're probably going to mention it, but that, that area. Olivera little, Street. Yeah, Olivera Street. Yeah, so it's like the tourist version of the main, well, it's the main area. That, that was settled. fantastic, that area. Yeah. I love that. And it's right Some, near that beautiful train station where they filmed Union Square Blade train station. Runner. Yeah, So really you've got to cool. go inside that train station, check it out. Lots of nice uh, Pacifico beer to drink. Something else that's quite interesting is the observation deck slide. So you oh, can yeah. slide in a in glass enclosed. I didn't even slide know about that last time I was the, there. At the OUE Sky Space Building. That's in DTLA. In DTLA. Yeah. So if no you're thanks. Um, good with heights, you can uh-huh. slide down a, a clear slide and scare yourself yeah, hanging nah, out the no side thanks. of the window. No thanks. At the side of a building, rather. You, um, you don't want to go outside the window, otherwise no. you'll die. <laughs> You're dead. You're dead. Um, botanical gardens. There's a Huntington Botanical Gardens to oh, check yeah. out. There's also we never did that. Did never we? did it. Never but did the Huntington Gardens. We'd love to. Garden. There's surrounding mm. areas, big cities, sprawling. So you have places like Mulholland Drive that you can go have an awesome view at. Um, you've got places in Silver Lake that you can go visit. Um, oh, Sleepless in Silver Lake by La Savvy Good Fair. song. One um, of my favorite film uh, so, songs ever. Silver Lake has um, cafe, a bit of a cafe culture um, there as well. And there was something else I was going to mention. Okay. Um, something, something, something. Something, 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 something. Oh, yes, something. the Hollyhock House. The Hollyhock House. The Frank Lloyd Wright designed property. Very lucky. There's something there that you can go see. Oh. It's it's a bit of a different style to what he's normally done. A bit of a sort of... It's not like falling water. It's not like falling water. It's got a bit of an ethnic sort of... Egyptian a vibe, very very cool, very different, and you get to see that it's in Los Angeles. 
Um, mm. Again, something I didn't get to do, but I really just want to go back and just see that. Can I say, you know the hollyhock, that's a plant. Is it? Yeah, it used to grow in my uh, client's garden. Well, there you go. There, there you, you go. go. Shout out to Toby with his hollyhock plants. And the other thing is about the hollyhock house is it's got a lot of um, Frank Lloyd Wright designed furniture in there as well. That would be cool. And it was a residence for an oil heiress between oh. built in 1919 to 1921. So wow. it's got a bit of a Art Deco. I don't know. It's got a, it's it's a real great combination of things. Can I just say you're the fact girl for this episode? Really, you are. You're giving <laughs> you're giving some beautiful facts and things to do. Yeah. That's my job. That's why she's on. <laughs> anyway, so, so that's LA. LA. Go LA's, there. Go, go, just go. What are you waiting for? Number three is Cairns, Australia. Yes. Homegrown. Homegrown. So Cairns is a place that I know well and Mandy knows well also. Mm-hmm. I seem to be doing a list of places I know or have been to, which is actually probably the best thing to do. Otherwise, I'm talking about places I don't know much about. <laughs> actually, the first number one place. Well, the, we haven't been. We haven't been, but anyway, uh, Cairns, fantastic, fantastic place to go if you want to go to the Great Barrier Reef. Mm-hmm. It it makes for a a great hub to see things in northern Queensland. For instance, like Coranda. Yep, good place great to Barrier start Reef. in Australia if yeah, you're coming good place from to start. Europe, Port- I suppose. Yeah, well, that's what a lot of the. Um, travelers do the people that want to do a working visa they'll start in cairns work there for a bit then move their way down to melbourne and go wherever else they want to go perth adelaide hobart darwin Mm -hmm. alice springs wherever they want to go broom but they um they usually generally start in in cairns cairns is really great though because it does have the great barrier reef and it probably has the most amount of boats that take you out to the great barrier reef yep so if you do want to go to the great barrier reef for a good tour of the reef to go, you know, snorkeling and so forth, mm-hmm. it will cost you 200 plus, maybe $250. Yeah. yeah. It's not close, that's it's why. It's not close. It's about a three-hour mm. fast two, boat ride. Two hours. Two and a I half. I suppose the, the trip is an all-day trip. It it's will be like a 12-hour day out um, getting to the reef, going to various stops on the reef. Well, they go to about three yep. if you go on a good yep. tour. And they're, all, they're not close to each other, so you have to travel. Yes, true. Um, and they're good examples of so probably the reef at its best. Um, and they alternate, I suppose, places as well so it doesn't get over, overly visited. Well, yes. Um, and the places they want to send you to are the places where the reef still looks pretty good. Yes. Now, the reef is still looking beautiful. There is just sections of it that are dead or dying off. Yeah. But I've seen it with my own eyes. There is sections that are coming back. Oh, fantastic. So we've got to be more positive about so this. There's a lot tw- of negativity about the reef. And you've been twice, right? I've so been you've twice. you've seen it at two different times. I've seen it at, uh, I've seen it five to six years apart. Apart. Mm-hmm. And yes, the last time I went, it wasn't as great as the time before. But they are making amends. They are doing things to. I think they're breeding coral. They are. They're breeding coral and then replanting. Sticking a, re- yeah. Yeah, sticking it back on the coral. Yeah. Uh, really fascinating stuff, but as, as Australians, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that we are trying to look after this beautiful thing. This is one of the seven um, wonders of the natural, natural world, world. Yeah, and you can see it from space. If you in Cairns, it is the number one thing to do. It is nearly the only thing to do. No, no, I've got plenty more. <laughs> I've got I've got some too, but I'm okay. very biased. I just love swimming. Yeah. Also, if if you find that you don't want to spend the money on the Great yep. Barrier Reef or to go there, you can do an an island. You can go to Green Island, which mm-hmm. is maybe half an hour, forty five minutes away. Yep. From Cairns. Yep. And that has a reef that surrounds the island. They'll drop you off at the pier, and then you just walk off the pier and walk down to the sandy shoreline. Mm-hmm. Set up your beach towel, get your um, snorkel gear on, and within about 5, 10, 15 metres, maybe 15, 20 metres, you're at a reef. Yeah. And you're swimming amongst the fish, and you know what I saw when I was there? A turtle. Yes, me too. Oh, you did, because yeah. you were swimming with me. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, when I've the, the last couple of times I've been to the Great Barrier Reef, I've seen white-tipped reef sharks. Wow. But they are not 
uh, they're really friendly. They're not, um, they're not going to come up and attack you. Okay. They have no interest in attacking you. So that's really cool. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> apart from the Great Barrier Reef, Mandy. Yes. Uh, what, what do you suggest? So there's, you mentioned Coranda. Coranda, I did. So you want to go has, into Coranda a bit? Yeah. So it has a scenic railway that you can mm-hmm. go through. There's a market there, like a mm-hmm. handicraft sort of market. Yeah, there's, yeah. It's a handicraft where I bought, um, what was that? That shark. Necklace thing <laughs> once, a real Aussie thing. Yeah, you bought me little earrings there too. Oh, yeah, I did. Um, Sky Whale, Sky Rail. <laughs> oh, my God, that was so cute. Rain, Sky Whale. Rainforest Cableway, so a Cam- suspended- Cableway. <laughs> it is a cableway. <laughs> suspended. Uh, um, that's little, so funny. Little uh, gondola ride. Yes. Um, you've also got the Daintree Rainforest. Oh, how could I miss that? So obviously, there's- I obviously knew Mandy was going to talk about it, kids. A hike. But there's also um, a walk, walk, a walk, walk through, <laughs> a walk through, a suspended sort of um, yep, a center where you can go and walk at we, different heights uh, and levels through the. You mean where the cafe is? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Um, also, if you're in Cairns, it's a good stop off point. Uh, or starting point, rather, to go to Palm Cove and Port Douglas. Fantastic place. So and from hour Port Douglas, you can still go to the reef as well. Of course. If anyone's wondering. Hour and a half to two hour drive from Cairns. A nice coastal drive, actually. Yeah, we did it in a Hyundai um, van. accent. No, we van. did it in a van. It was a van, wasn't it? Was it? A yeah, a bunch big of us. Um, and it was the Frenchies. These are beachfront um, kind of resort towns. Not resort towns, but towns that are um, got really nice beach beach access and again like ben said close to the reef Mm -hmm. and if you go further up uh the coast further away from these areas and further away from Mm -hmm. cairns you get to a place called cape tribulation which is a deserted sandy beach it's a it's part of the daintree national park but it's pretty much where paved roads end yeah well you need a four-wheel drive to continue on otherwise yeah yeah, you just you can't make it in a normal car no and also, talking about Daintree Rainforest, mm-hmm. you can do a Daintree River cruise, which is- That would be nice. Is not like a leisurely cruise where you have gear yes. and things like that. It's a cruise for you to spot some crocodiles. So, lots of cro- crocodiles in the Daintree River. What, what are they called, Manny? A crocodile? Cro- cro- crocodiles. <laughs> um, so, they're, they're there. We saw a yes. little one when we were there. Yeah, we did see a little crocodile. Yes, and you, there's some spectacular waterfalls, Barren Falls and the Barren Gorge National Park. And Mosman Gorge and, is there too. Well, Mosman Gorge is your oh, opportunity more, to yes. uh, swim in a watering hole, which is fresh water without crocodiles. Okay, I swam in Mosman Gorge about five years ago before they started making you pay for it. Yes. But now they've got this big visitor center where they... They get you to pay for it, but I know where the money's going. It's, it's going to help the Aboriginal communities and so forth. Yeah. So that's um, all right. I'm happy with that. Apparently, at certain times of the year, you could also see whales. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't know if it's May. Sorry to ruin the podcast. Oh, no. Um, you just ruined it all. <laughs> <laughs> There's Fitzroy Island not too far away. Mm. Um, Crater Lakes National Park as well. Crater Lakes. Cra- Crater Lakes. Crater yep. Lakes. Yep. Okay. And now, May's a good time to yes. go because- if you go out in the wet season, mm-hmm. the water is pretty average. Yeah, it's, it's not that clear. And it's murky, isn't it? It's up, murky. Up in Port Douglas, most it's murky. In, most importantly, you are avoiding the Irukandji jellyfish. And they are the size of your thumbnail. So have a look at your thumbnail. Look. Yeah. And then go, these little things can kill me yeah. within a minute. You are dead. So you so want to avoid careful. those because if you do decide to swim... Firstly, I well, don't... Well, they always say to wear a full-body yeah, wetsuit. Yeah, you should be wearing otherwise, a Otherwise, you know, you, you've got a death wish otherwise. Yeah. So, May is a great time. You don't have to do that. Also, um, a good thing about being in Cairns in May is the hotels are cheaper and mm. and uh, I'm guessing hostels as well would be cheaper. Sure. Yeah. But from what I've read, the, the hotels are cheaper and I've been there, so I know. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, so I think... Um, if, if you're coming to Australia and, and you really want to see that Great Barrier Reef, come to Cairns, come in May, and it will be nice for you. Yeah. Okay? Next. Okay. What are we off to? 
We are off to now Florence in Italy, oh, Mandy's favorite Italian city. Sure is. So the days are long in May in Florence. Uh, you get about, uh, on average, about 11 hours of sunlight Sounds a good. day. So there's plenty of time to enjoy a cold drink and a drink at night at one of the little bars or cafes. It is a absolutely wonderful, wonderful place to visit with its cobbled streets and architecture, Renaissance architecture. Mm-hmm. I was there. We were there in May 2010, weren't we? Yep. Yep. So, and temperatures apparently don't get over 24. So, it's nice, mild weather. It's officially the last month of spring, but Mm -hmm. beautiful nonetheless. Mm -hmm. There's only a small amount of rainfall. But um, I remember when we were there, we really loved our experience in Florence, walking the streets, going to little cafes, getting a coffee. We had a beautiful meal, Buca Mario, mm-hmm. which I spoke about on a podcast nice traditional a while meal. ago. Yeah. My top 10 favorite food experiences. That was where we ate some boar, wasn't it? Yeah, wild boar. Wild boar. Pretty good. And that was fantastic. So go to Buca Mario if you want some really authentic, authentic Floresian. Floresian. Yeah, just made it up. Floresian food. Florentine. Florentine. Florentines. How Florentines. How delicious are those? Yeah, I well, love those biscuits. Florentines are the best, Thought aren't they? all about they? them. Yeah. Yep. So that, that's a great place to go for dinner. If you're into your gardens, you have to go to the Boboli Gardens. Yeah. Fantastic place. Huge avenues. I think they're gravel avenues. Yeah. With large trees. Yes. Beautiful ponds. Water features. Water features. Fantastic. There was even that um, really interesting water feature that kind of went down in little levels. Yeah. Yeah. When you walk down the steps. That's I really, beautiful. I thought that was fantastic, Gro- that place. The obligatory gro- grotto is there oh, as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's got a very funny picture of like this um, really rotund man. <laughs> but that's a- very, very funny stuff. Yeah. Um, also, if you're in Florence, you, you don't want to miss the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore. Very good, ben. Which has that, thank you, which has that... Um, Mm, what is it? the orange roof? And I'm guessing that is made out of terracotta. Terracotta, yes. But that's that's really beautiful inside and out. Great yeah. for pictures. Mm-hmm. Great for your Instagram. Mm-hmm. Instagram watchers. 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 What else can you see? Uh, also, the Uffizi Gallery. Yeah, has a major number of the best. A major number. <laughs> Uffizi Gallery has some of the best artwork in the world. Re- of the Renaissance of period. Of the Renaissance really. period. Full of Renaissance art with lots of. Uh, it's got my favorite guy in it. Caravaggio. Yeah, yeah, Medusa head, dude. Um, but it's also got Fantastic. a lot of the art of the time being very religious. Yeah, of course. So, therefore, there's a lot of that. You know uh, what? Like a lot of it. I think we're both over religious art. Even if you're you'll like your, us, you'll get and you're your over fill. that. Go still it's go impressive. to your visa, your visa the gallery. Best galleries in the it's world. Go- well, yeah, it's one of the best. That and the Louvre yeah, would I'm be sure the two best big galleries. Ones. Yeah. No, I'm saying the two best big galleries because your visa is pretty large. Yeah, it's big. You need the whole day, or you could go multiple, multiple days. Multiple times. Yeah. Uh, another thing that you want to see, which is actually quite close to your visa gallery, is a Ponte Vecchio. Yeah, get ripped up jewelry there. Yeah, they got all those merchants selling jewelry on the. Yeah. Um, on the bridge, which is just a beautiful but looking bridge. But it's a bridge. medieval b- bridge, so it's super yeah. impressive. No, it's awesome. Enclosed and, you know, really quite quite beautiful. And go and get yourself something to eat and drink at the Palazzo Vecchio. Plaza Vecchio. Plaza yeah. Vecchio. That's something they do well, isn't it? Yeah, look, the Italians know how to cook up some really good food. One of my favorite foods in the world is... Uh, pasta, which is um, which is what Mandy will be cooking for me once I finish this podcast, which I really wanted to get done. I'm really happy I'm actually doing this podcast again after I lost the time file around. <laughs> because I think it's better this time. Oh, good. I really think it's Here better. You go. Uh, so, yeah, out of all those things to do, um, my favorite thing I think was the gardens and Uffizi Gallery, but in in a general, in a whole, I love Florence a lot. But if you were to ask me what my favorite Italian city is, it would probably be the sinking water, sinking Venice. Venice. 
I feel sorry for Venice, but it keeps going underwater. Can I give you a few more of my yeah, favorite? I would love my, to know my th- yeah, things to do in my absolutely. favorite city. Yeah, go for it. Um, so you mentioned mm-hmm. Ponte Vecchio. Mm-hmm, it goes I did. well. There is that river that With runs the river. through the city, which uh-huh. is the River Arno. And so yep. there is more than just one bridge that crosses it. So oh, you'll be spoiled with bridges. True. We walked um, over a couple of yeah. them. Yeah. And you'll also, there is a river beach there. So that's interesting. Oh, like the Paris Plage. Yeah, like the Paris Plage. Oh. Um, what's also beautiful is that um, Florence has so many Renaissance buildings and Renaissance statues. Fancy around, that. Um, that it's uh, <laughs> kind of. Not touched by modern times. That's so true. It's very you will not of the see time. modern skyscrapers in Florence. That yeah. is one thing you do not see. You do not see that. Um, what you get to see is a lot of terracotta roofs around. That's true. And it's set obviously in the beautiful Tuscan. Oh, um, if you're in Tuscany, you've got to go out and do some wineries. A hundred percent. Which so we Ch- didn't do. Chianti is the grape <laughs> of choice in this area. And what's that? Is that a red or a white it's a red. grape? Um, Which is probably what we're going to drink tonight, some red wine. Oh, I read my mind. Um, So you can do some Tuscan wine tasting as well. Um, Something also Florence is known for is its leather as well as jewelry. Yeah, I bought bought a couple Uh, bags. You know those shoes I bought in Florence? Yes. They were made out of leather and they were the most beautifully designed shoes I've ever worn. Really cool. They were kind of a mix between a sneaker and a... A dress shoe, I guess. Yeah, they were awesome. I still have them. I yeah. didn't chuck them out. Great stuff to buy there. Um, you can also eat very well. Florentine cooking is very um, meat-based. but It's, it's healthy it's, still. It's it's delicious. So it's got its own particular cuisine. And, and that wild boar, which we mentioned yeah. earlier, that um, that would run wild, I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm assuming so. Obviously, wild in boar the countryside. in the countryside. They've got... Have they got deer and venison and stuff? I'm not sure we didn't eat it, but they probably do. Um, Gelato. You had some gelato. Mate, I had some of the best gelato. I think I probably even had the gelato in Palazzo Vecchio. I think so. Um, So there's that Mm. as well. And you've got lots of churches. Even if you're not religious, you've got lots of churches to visit that are stunning. Santa Trinita is one of them. Oh, yeah. And you mentioned, obviously, Santa Maria del Fiore yep. is the most impressive. Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore. It's got that famous dome, which is Brush... Bruschetta. Brunelleschi's dome, which oh. is, for the time, quite Can't an you arcade. walk up yeah. to that tower, and it's all, the bell tower? And it's all, um, all ornately painted, and it's, of the time, quite an architectural feat. And oh, it's, as it's a gorgeous building. any great town in Italy, you have a great market, which is Mercato Centrale. Mercato Centrale. And that Centrale. is a great place to just look at all the beautiful wares that they have, the food. Is that fresh fish too? Uh, or is pretty it meat? sure it's mostly veg. Veggies. Ah. Um, and their veg is just beautiful. Lots of Oh, the Different tomatoes types there. Of, yeah, oh tomatoes. My God, there's, the tomatoes there's places are amazing. to eat in there as well. There's sweets, there's dried fruits, there's meats. There's hey, you're making me excited. Now I want to go back to Florence. Rotisserie chickens. Oh, no, don't. There is plates of just deliciousness that you can have oh. um, there as well. So um, you're not spoiled and you will not you will not thin out when you're in Venice. You mean there. you're going to get fat? Oh, there is fish there too. I'm telling you, people, you You're will gonna eat. You're going to come back five kilos heavier. Just eat. Just eat. Eat and drink. Just do it. Eat and drink because that's what we do when we're away. We eat and drink. So, Venice has its, you know, canals. Yes. But Florence has its art, its buildings, its food, its wine, mm-hmm. its countryside. So, yes, I would pick Florence. Well, In that May. is fantastic. And thank you, Mandy. Yep. May is a beautiful time to go to Florence. We got our number one now. Where are we going now? We are we are actually off to South America. What? We're off to Lima, Peru, a place that Mandy and I haven't been to. Uh, Lima is the capital of Peru, mm-hmm. and there are direct flights from Melbourne to Santiago, Chile, mm-hmm. Santiago. And I think that if you're from Australia, your best bet is to go to Santiago and take a flight to Lima. Yes. Which I've looked it up and it is a possibility. You can do it. Of course you can. If you're in the US, I'm sure you can go direct to Lima. If you're anywhere in Europe, I'm sure you can go to Lima direct, especially if you're from Spain or Portugal. Yes. 
Uh, they do speak uh, Portuguese because the Portuguese. No, they speak Spanish. Didn't the Portuguese settle Lima? Spanish. Spanish conquistadors. Conquistadors. Ah, so they, they speak... took it over. Ah, actually, that's right. I don't took know it over why from I thought the, the Portuguese from the did Incans. that. Incans and the Mayans. Portuguese are the Brazilians. Aztecs, sorry, the Incans and the Aztecs. Incans. And Aztecs. And so um, there is a lot of history in that area. Mandy, I could talk about the Incas and the Aztecs all day, okay? Go for it. No, I'm not. Mm. But we've never travelled to South America in general. No. But, I mean, it would be a great place to go to, Lima. It's fantastic to go there in May. Yes. Uh, it is a place I'd like to go to. I'd probably want to go via San Diego because I really want to see San Diego. I'd spend four or five nights there or six nights in San Diego and probably mm-hmm. the same in Lima. Mm-hmm. Lima is by the ocean mm-hmm. and and just looks like a place that would be my type of place where I could drink and eat and enjoy enjoy the architecture, enjoy the people because the What's people so seem really nice. What's so special about the architecture? What's so special about the architecture is <laughs> Mandy's looking at me. It's because the South uh, Spanish people yeah. came and settled or conquered um, Lima back in the 15 or 1600, something like that. So the, the capital originally was Cusco. What? And then, yeah. And then the Spanish. I know that. I knew it was Cusco. Spanish moved it to Lima. Lima. So there's a bunch of Baroque buildings there. Can people um, email me, travelmanpodcast at gmail.com, and let me know if I go over things a bit too much. Come on, tell me off. Thank nah, you. Nah, you don't. No, no, no. But um, Lima looks like a very interesting place because of the excellent architecture, mm. their culture. Obviously, it's the um, My- Mayan people. No, no. <laughs> the it Aztecs, doesn't matter. The Incans. Incans. Yeah. What's the difference? Can then, we have um, a quick, short little history lesson? No, history lesson? we'll save that for another podcast. Okay, so um, one of the best things about Lima oh my God. <laughs> is that Machu Picchu is pretty close. Okay. Kind of. Is it? Oh, well, is, it no. <laughs> what they say is that Lima is a great place to start. To, to start. Well, like a... A place where you go to be a place. Yeah. <laughs> on the chicken. <laughs> it's actually... Um, Wait. It's a... Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that Lima is a great jumping off point. If yeah. you want to go to Machu Picchu, use it's, Lima it, as that true, point. True. It is four hours probably yeah. to one part and then, yeah. Look, it's... When and Machu go- Picchu when is going perfect to Machu, up there. Machu Picchu, it's... Yeah, obviously, it's a... Somewhere, but you don't go for the day. What? It's, uh, it's, it's, yeah. It takes you probably a day just to hike up. It. Potentially. Um, in May, it's not cold. It's not wet. So, it's really perfect to to see Machu Picchu. Okay. Amazing. And okay. to be in Lima. Same okay. reason, not wet. So, I'm going to give you a few little um, okay. bits and pieces here. Sure. To why you should go to Lima, Peru in May. Let's do it. So, May is the dry season. Mm-hmm. Excellent hikes up the Andes Mountains. You can go up the Andes mm-hmm. and trips and trip tra- trips trips no trips to Lake Titicaca. Oh, Titicaca and the Incan Trail. Mm-hmm. Not many tourists around, so it'd be pretty quiet for you. Mm-hmm. It's not the high season yet, so that's fantastic. If you are planning trips to Bolivia and Chile, in May is fantastic. Mm-hmm. It's also quiet in South America, pretty much all of that part of South America. Great climate. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one of the driest times to go to Peru. Yeah. So May is really nice and dry and also through to September is nice. Mm-hmm. Um, go to Costco. Cusco? And Costco. <laughs> go to Cusco. Which is the old Which capital. is the old capital. So do that. Uh, see... When you're in Lima, go to the main square. Mm. It is apparently called the birthplace of Lima. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the ornate fountain that's surrounded by various palaces, which includes the government palace. Yes. Cathedral of Lima. Yes. The Archbishop's Palace of Lima. Yes. The Municipal Palace and the Palace of Union. Yes. So that's all cool things to do. I think there's a basilica there as well. Yeah, I think there's a basilica. Basilica. 
go to the Larco Museum. Yeah. This is really cool because it's got a great uh, collection of pre-Columbian artifacts that Mm. date back to 200 AD. Mm -hmm. There's also an estimated 45,000 artifacts in the museum. Mm Mm-hmm. So that sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? It does. Also, I'm going to be the fact man from now on. Okay. Uh, 1926 was when the place was well, commissioned or, or made, mm. and it was um, by Raphael Larco Hoyle, and he was a pioneer mm-hmm. of Peruvian archaeology. Fantastic. And um, you can do some free walking tours in Lima, which sound pretty cool. Yes. Um, there's, a, there's this bus that you can take. You know, like you've got the hop-off, yeah. hop-on bus. There's a bus called the Mirror Bus, and that will allow you to take a look at um, Lima panoramically. Oh, yeah! Amazing. So you can jump on that bus, and it takes you to all the cool places. Yeah, and you'll be able to take photos and enjoy Lima. I know when I was in Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, I used to hop and off, hop on, hop off bus because some of the places were hard to get to, mm. and it, it just it. It takes you to all those cool places that you think oh, might be hard to get to without a car. Mm. Obviously, if you want to hire a car, you can do that, or you can take the taxis in Lima. They seem okay. Another place that you can see is the Circuito Magico del Aqua. Have you seen that? The water, the park, the water fountain park. It's yeah. got all the um, the fluorescent lighting. Heaps of different that when water the water yeah. um, flows back and forth. Looks like a thing to yeah, see. Yeah, it um, just looks like an art, night. art piece. Oh, they say to see it at night because that's when it lights up. It looks fantastic. Mm-hmm. That's a very Instagrammable picture. Mandy, what what other things have you seen? So I just found out that there's quite yeah. a, a Japanese culture in Lima. A and lot of what Japanese. What do we love? Japan. Yeah, and what do we love even more? Sushi. Yeah, Japanese fusion food. Oh well, so yeah, we love that. There was quite a number of migrants that came. That's got to, a name though. They've got a name for yeah. it. Uh, that came to uh, Lima yeah. and settled there. So mm-hmm. there's the the food in general um, is quite quite good. In, yeah. In Peru, it's known to be quite delicious. You can eat guinea pig if you want, but you know that's up to you. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. the middle of the city, there is uh, the ruins of a pre Incan pyramid called Oaxaca Poblana. Oaxaca. Um, so that's something to see just in the midst mm. of um, skyscrapers and. Uh, modern times. Uh, also, something to drink while you're there is mm-hmm. the Pisco Sour. Pisco Sour. It's a cocktail. You can drink the Pisco straight or you can drink it in a sour cocktail. It's something that they do there traditionally. The Park of Love, an oceanside park uh-huh. with a kissing sculpture. Oh, the kissing sculpture with that famous bridge. Yeah, so there's a bridge apparently that um, joins two parts of the city. Is that where the lovers... Where the lovers were meant to... Or do, K- Take a kiss. Lovers, bit like a Romeo and Juliet. One, like us two. She was, that's right. She was from the good side of town. He was a street sweeper or something. They that's, got together yeah, and right. um, that park of love is to commemorate them. You've also got crafts, so lots of handicrafts, um, you know, uh, particular to the culture of uh, Peru. Museo de la Nacional. Yep. La Nacion. Yep. Um, so historical relics. Yep. Um, in regards to the just the history in that area, again, yep. Museum of Archaeology as well, Gold Museum of Peru is there. Man, as there's well. a lot to see, isn't there? Yeah. Um, there's also all those Baroque buildings we were talking about. They're really impressive and have stunning covered balconies, which are sometimes made out of wood, sometimes made out of stone, and they're just things you don't normally see, um, particularly in South America. You have another um, central shopping center, which has got, again, fruit, Mercado Central, Uh fruits, veggies, the whole lot. A nice coastal boardwalk that you can wander down. Coastal um, town, Lima. So it's it's on a cliff as well. It looks great. It looks stunning. Uh, Surf beaches are there if you're into that stuff. Mm -hmm. Seafood markets are there as well. Um, And what else can I tell you? There's lots of different districts that will give you a different sort of feel. Well, I can tell you um, www.howtoperu.com. Yes, good website. uh, Lists the districts that they believe are the safest and best districts to stay in. Mm -hmm. I'll leave a link in the show notes, but here's just – here's the districts that they recommend. One is Central Lima, the historic center. They say – 
Um, if you want to stay in Lima, stay in central Lima. It's, it's the heart of the city's historic core. It's also where you'll find other things like the Plaza de Armas, the government palace, and things that I mentioned earlier before. There's the UNESCO World Heritage Site with the historic center of Lima. Yep. So they say to go there. That's great. There's restaurants and lunchtime menus, and there's um, this place called Barrio Chino, Chinatown. So oh, wow. For um, huge Peruvian Chinese buffets. So that, that sounds oh, pretty delicious. Right up my alley. So they do say to stay... In um, central Lima. Mm-hmm. Uh, some other places they say st- say to stay in is Miraflores. Yes. And Miraflores, they say, is a classic traveler hangout. So during the high season, it sometimes feels like there are more foreigners than Peruvians lurking around there. So mm-hmm. it sounds like there's a good mix of ethnic ethnicity. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that sounds really cool. There's a lot of restaurants dotted around and bars and clubs. So you've got all your bars and clubs and street side cafes. Sounds probably a bit like France or Paris, parts of Paris. So uh, Miraflores is great. There's a good range of hotels there. Another area is San Is Isidrio. Is Isidrio. Isidrio. San Isidrio. Um, they said if um, Miraflores isn't as upscale enough for you, then the neighbouring San Isidrio district is just an also. It's another alternative. Mm-hmm. So you've got. Um, Golf clubs, tennis clubs, cocktail bars. Ooh, flash. It's flash. Um, and what else do they say? Oh, Barranquio. Mm-hmm. Barranco. Barranco is a great place to stay as well if you like uh, like the Bohemian lifestyle. So you got the Bohemian district of Lima is Barranco. Mm-hmm. So you got um, Peru's artists and poets and photographers and musicians all have inhabited that area. Sure. So that probably sounds like Montmartre if you're oh, yeah? in Paris. So that's the, probably the place I would stay. And um, other than that, they say there's a few alternative places uh, like uh, Punta Hermosa, which is by the seaside, Punta Negra, San Bartolo. Uh, if you like seafood, you might as well go south to Paracas for a few days. So nice. they're just a few things they say to stay, a few things, a few places, places. they yep. stay. They say to stay in. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Lima sounds like a place I now want to go to. Definitely. We've done our research. We've done our research. And if you're wondering, listener, why I chose Lima, I don't have a clue. It's interesting. It's and just it sounds interesting. like a great place. Yep. So... I'm probably going to leave it at that. If you guys thought that was interesting, you guy thought that was interesting, mm-hmm. let me know. Email me at travelmanpodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. I'd like to know what you think of the podcast, what episode was your favorite. Yep. Um, if you like this style, sure. let me know. Give I, us I'd, a comment. Yeah. Yeah. Send me, send me a message. You can also contact me at Travel Man Podcast on Instagram, yep. Travel Man Pod on G. Um, I was going to say Travel Man Pod on Gmail, Travel Man Pod at on, on Twitter. Yes. I have my website, www.travelmanpodcast.com, where you can listen to all the episodes, all the last episodes. Um, I am on iTunes. So just look up. Travel Man Podcast, subscribe, like, comment, do all that type of stuff. I'm also on YouTube, Travel Man Podcast. I have a page and a group set up on Facebook, Travel Man Podcast. So, look, all you have to do is type in Travel Man Podcast. And remember, Travel Man is one word. Just type that in Google and Google will show you the way. Thanks, guys. And have a great guy. guy. <laughs> See you, guy. Bye. Bye.